Luis Cuba Arias, J. Leon Love here at Mayweather Box Club. Some more rounds between you guys, man. How was the work today? Great. Great, man. Really great. Just like every time, you know, it's a very intense sparring session. But that's all we know how to do, man. We're friends, but once we get in that ring, you know, it's a different story. It's time to work, and uh, as you can tell, that's what it is, man. I mean, go to work. you got to think, man. Um, this is some of the best work I've been getting for, for years now, since I've, and, and since I've been out here in Vegas. So, um, Luis Aries, definitely somebody you should definitely watch for on the rise, coming fast for anybody. You know what I mean? The middleweight and super middleweight division is on, on, is on, on, on watch right now, so we coming for the take. Now, that's what I was going to ask you. You tell viewers your history, because when you first moved to Vegas, he was the one giving you work at Hit Factor, right? Yeah. Tell us about those early days, getting to know each other. I mean, you know what? Me and me and uh, Cuba have been like been knowing each other since we was kids. But not yeah. only that, um, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> not only that, uh, you got to think we was kind of like rivals in, in in the amateurs. You know what I mean? Same weight class. Weight class. You know what I mean? He was a top amateur. Stop it. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, to coming up. You know, you would see him at every, at every national tournament holding it down for his, you know, on his side, I'm holding it down on my side. But um, here we are, now as pros, giving each other work under the same um, promotion company, doing what we do. And we just want to follow up your thoughts on uh, get Peter Quillen's fight this weekend. What do you guys think of him? You weren't too impressed, it sound like. Um, you know what? Um, first of all, I'm going to give respect when it's due, and I'm going give, to give it. He's a champion. I mean, he earned his right to be where he is. He's doing what he has to do. You know, um, I just think, man, the decision was, I mean, the, the scorecards was far-fetched. I seen Rosado and he and I fought Rosado. The dude is is, de is not gonna lay down for nobody. He's gonna come and fight. Yeah, it don't matter. He's um, always gonna be in a good fight. I mean, I, I'm definitely he's, he ma he makes a good fight. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, as far as you know, the cut. I mean, he, he's gonna he's gonna fight with his heart. He doesn't want to quit. I mean, we didn't see worse cuts in, in fighting. I think he, you know they should have just let him fight. It's a title fight. That's how I feel. Okay, what do you I mean, think? Go ahead. Good. I mean, I, as, as far as the cut, I mean, looking at it, I mean, it was a bad cut. You got to see it. It was right on his eye. I mean, I know the bell had wrong. I mean, but the cut reopened in, what, 30 seconds? Yeah. So, I, I, it, it was just a tough situation, you know, but Rosado started too late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He just really started too late, uh, uh, aside from the judging. You know, he started too late, took, took a couple rounds off. And but it, it looked like he had a good game plan, and it looked like the game plan was was starting to you know starting to roll and starting to get going and starting to do what he's supposed to be doing. Bay over here, and um, but it, it was a good fight, you know. Uh, both both showed uh, a lot of errors, you know, that that they need to work on. Definitely. Especially Quillen, um, even though he's a champion, he's I, I still he's feel green. like he has to solidify himself as a true champion. He has defended his title two times, but um. Neither of them was more impressive than the other one, and I just feel like, as a champion, you got to get better and better each fight. You know, you got to impress your fans more and more each fight, and he's not doing that. And that's that's, that's falling I mean, apart showed, on him. Like, like, like you say, he showed a lot of errors. I mean, I mean, I think if if the cut didn't happen. Rosado was coming strong and strong, you know, each round, and I think you know, and, I, and he hurt Quillen a lot. And you know, for somebody for somebody like Rosado, I mean, he he would have kept that pressure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think, man, I I think Quillen is a champion, and I would give him respect as a champion. But I mean, as a fighter, I know I can beat him. I know what I'm saying I know I can beat Rosado again. I know I can do that. So at the end of the day, I would love to fight them both. You know what I'm saying? It just all comes down to the to the game. What was it like catch up with Floyd? He was by the gym today. You guys, uh, Floyd Mayweather, well check out your sparring. What's always like seeing him? He's a character. You know what I'm saying? Floyd is Floyd, so he gonna do. He gonna hype everything up. So of course he gonna come in. You know, talking smack. Uh, but he brings in a good energy to the gym, which you need every now and then. You can't just be hardcore and just focus on yourself. You gotta have some fun, some laughs, you know, you gotta have people talking smack. So he always brings that to the gym and you know it's always a good day in the gym when Floyd gets here. Not only that, man, you got a lot of guys in here trying to trying to make a name, trying to get signed. So I mean you got it, it just intensifies everything, you know, the training, whether hitting the bag, speed bag or sparring. Last thing, Bernard Hopkins fought this weekend. Good fight with Marab, but he yeah, wants to fight Floyd at 160. What do you think of that? Foolish. That shit is ridiculous, Stop it, man. Cut yeah. it out, Stop man. Stop it. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, 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 he made 160. He ain't made 160 in 15. What? How many years? Has but he made really, what is that, though? Like, come on. Floyd, Floyd is Floyd 145, 146 pounds. Eating steaks and, and burgers and stuff. You know, that's just, it's too far fetched. I, I feel like that idea shouldn't even be thought of. It's ridiculous. There's way more more realistic fights that can come happen. And I mean, Bernard just you know wants to fight anybody, but I just feel like Bernard, you already you're way too big. You moved on. It's other good. It's other good fights and big fights for Bernard. You know, uh, 
he looked good. I mean, he beat the smack out of Murat. Um, but there's other competition at that weight class, you know, elsewhere. So uh, I, I don't think that that fight will happen. It's but just, I, I heard uh, Andre Ward is moving up 175 after Edwin Rodriguez. Wow, that's there's another fight. fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, even Edwin Rodriguez is a good fight. Like Edwin Rodriguez. I mean, Stevenson. Carl Frock. There's, a, there's yeah. a, Carl Frock. A lot of. Boot, 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 that's, a lot of fights. That's a lot of good fights. A lot of there. I mean, oh. to try to drop down to 160, is foolish. Thanks, man. Guys.